Step seven, getting customers. Now we have a package that's ready to sell, but we need to actually get the customers who are interested in our package. And there's four ways that you can get customers. There's only really one way that is worth it, in my opinion, for you and for most of the guys watching this, like for my younger self, there's only one way that I would recommend, but there is four ways you can get customers and they are warm outreach. Warm outreach is where you message people that you know. So straight away, like this just seems cringe to me because it's imagine messaging like your old high school friends on, on Instagram if they want to buy this package that you've set for a few thousand dollars. Like, do you know what I mean? If, if, like, if you're a professional and you're 30 years old and you know loads of businessmen, okay, fair enough. But if you're like a young guy and you only know like other young guys, I don't think warm outreach, the people you know, is going to like work so well. You could try and, you know, message the people that you know who are the most successful, maybe the head teacher of your school. But again, it's like, it's still a little bit like there's quite a lot of friction and almost embarrassment for most young guys to consider that. The second is cold outreach. That's where you message people that you don't know. Maybe you try and find like random phone numbers online or email addresses or message random people on Instagram and pretty much say like, oh, hey, bro, I want to you want to uh, buy my my things? Sure. Like it can work and people do get a good level of success with it, but it's not what I would recommend. And the third is paid ads. That's where you'll go onto websites like, for example, YouTube, Google, Instagram. And on those platforms, you can pay, like you can pay the platform to put your advert in front of people. This means that you're going to be paying 25, 50, hundred dollars per day to get your like advert seen in front of other people. And you'll need to learn the skill of like how to actually get the ROI, which is quite difficult. And it's going to require quite a lot of upfront money. If you could spend 50 or hundred dollars every single day, then this could be something you'd consider, but most young guys can't do that. And so in my opinion, we are left with actually the best way to get customers, which is to post free content and to build up an audience. That's exactly what I've done here, which is the business model. So I actually feel very strong in teaching you this because you can see this like on my channel, I've built up an audience of 2 million guys. And then it's just those same guys that I mentioned my product to. This is, in my opinion, the single greatest way to, to get customers in this modern day, because not only do you get the customers, but you also build the loyal audience, which is genuinely the most valuable asset that you could accumulate in business. Plus, just think about the scale. Imagine being a completely new YouTuber. Is it absolutely unreasonable to think that a new guy who's, you know, posting his first few videos would get a hundred views on a YouTube video? Is that unreasonable? Like crazy? Like not really. Most guys will probably only get like 10 views on the first video. That's fine. But it's not crazy to think that you'd get a hundred, right? Well, to match that, you'd need to go and send out a hundred messages or a hundred DMs. When you really think about like how tedious it would be going on Instagram and sending everyone a message, go like, you know, calling a hundred people and not even knowing like who the fuck they are sending emails. It's like, it seems kind of quick, but you could imagine sending every cold email actually takes like five, 10 minutes. Whereas you could record a video where you just talk about, you know, some topic like, oh, hey guys, I just discovered this new weight loss trick, which is really, really good. You know, this is all you do. You uh, take a picture of your meal and it actually, literally, that's all you have to do is just take a picture of everything you eat and automatically you'll end up losing more weight than usual just because you're way more held accountable to it. And if you even send that picture to someone else, then, you know, you'll lose even more weight because of the accountability and everything. And by the way, I've got a fitness course. Just go click on the top link in the description. But it's not unreasonable to think that you'd get a hundred views in a social media post, maybe a thousand. Now we can say I'm kind of like a professional here and I've been doing this and practicing this for a few years and maybe I got lucky in some areas, but how many views does this video have? I've mentioned my product a few times in this video. Look at the views of this video. Imagine if I had to message that many people. So you can see that posting content gives you a huge number of people that you can reach out to. So we'll choose this as our path to getting customers. So what we're going to do is we're going to post onto a social media that we can learn to master over time. And this is where we need to decide, okay, well, which social media should we get good at? Is Hamza just telling me to be a YouTuber, but TikTok is doing really well right now, isn't it? And Alex Mosey says that Twitter is really good. So maybe we should do Twitter and, you know, maybe you're bouncing around which one, which social media platform should you do? What I recommend is what I've learned from another entrepreneur named Dan Co. And he said, first figure out if you want to speak or write. So I'd ask you this, do you want to be a speaker like I'm speaking right now, perhaps being on camera? Or maybe do, would you enjoy typing words on a keyboard instead? Which one would you enjoy more? Which one would you actually like want to do more? As hard as it is to like, you know, set up recording and speak for an hour or two hours or three hours straight, 
I actually have more fun doing this than I would just typing and bashing my, like, you know, the keyboard in. So this is what I've chosen. So speak or write, which one would you rather do? Once you have your idea, then we choose the social media platform based on which skill that we want to level up. For speaking, there's podcasts, YouTube, maybe TikTok if you want to make like educational content on there. And if you want to write, then Twitter is probably the best place. In general, if you're trying to figure out which social media you should post on, the easiest answer is like, just post on the one that you consume on. Chances are YouTube is probably like your most popular social media that you're watching on right now. It's the one that you spend your most time on. Just post on that. You understand it. You know how it works. You see which videos do quite well. You see like the creators who have got a certain style and you see the trends and, and uh, the hot topics. So just go with the one that you actually spend your time consuming. A quick powerful tip. Once you have chosen whether you're going to speak or write, the single highest ROI activity that you could do in your entire business, like the single most powerful activity you could do in work is to level up either the skill of speaking or writing. Because with everything that we've covered with making money, we've talked about, you know, the package and the problems and solutions, everything like that. The most powerful leverage that we have right now is social media. If you can pop off on social media, that is the single like greatest thing that could happen to you in like a business sense. It might not be good for your mental health. It probably won't be, but for business, it will be really good. And so the single greatest thing you could do to pop off on social media is not to just like you're trying to get lucky or some bullshit, but it's rather to think, okay, I chose to speak on YouTube. Then you just level up your speaking skill. You go and get books on speaking. Or for example, if you wrote, if you chose writing, then you'll get books on writing. You go search for a speaking coach or a writing coach, depending on which social media you've chosen. And you'd literally just level it up. For speaking, there's also storytelling. So for example, I have a speaking coach and also a storytelling coach. And now my videos are doing better than ever. So this is what you do to get customers. You start your own social media profile. Okay, you've made your YouTube channel or your Twitter account. Then what you do is you post free content. So you write tweets, maybe threads, or you post YouTube videos where all you're thinking about, you're not trying to grow an audience, you're not trying to get views, all you're trying to think of is, I want to give as good advice as possible to my dream customer. Remember like the dream avatar, the kind of person we're trying to help. All you're thinking about is just trying to help them as much as possible and working super hard at that. I want you to really think right now, like this video that you're watching, think about how hard and difficult this video is. For hours I've been speaking, I've had to take breaks because my throat literally hurts, my brain feels like like not very foggy, but quite like weirdly heavy right now because of how, how, how I can't even speak properly. Like, do you literally see, hear me stuttering as I try and explain to you how hard I've worked for this? And think about this. Now, this video is going to make a fair amount of money on AdSense and everything, but really just think about my intention here. It's to help you. It's to get you insane results. Because if this video can be so good that you literally follow it and actually make some money in real life, you're going to like me, right? You're actually going to like really, really like me. You might even send this video to a few people. When you end up speaking to someone, maybe even six months from now, maybe five years from now, you might even end up telling them, oh, you should watch Hamza's Money Guide. That's how I started. Maybe you'll be like, like famous in a year from now mentioning the start of like your business was when you watched Hamza's Money Guide and this video keeps popping off more and more and more and more. And maybe if you wanted more support, because you liked me, because you know this video has helped you, because you trusted me, because my advice worked for you, you'd see that the one program that I sell at Donna's School, you'd look at it and think, damn, I can actually afford it now. I mean, if his video worked, I wonder what his online school would be like. And then you might consider buying it. That's the exact process that we want you to follow. You make super helpful content, like the greatest kind of content, the most helpful content that you could think of, you know, for your dream customers' problems. So for example, if we're in the fitness niche, we're thinking, okay, these fatties are struggling with losing weight. And why? Because they've got all those, remember that massive problem list? They've got all those problems like, oh, but you know, I don't even know how to sign up to the gym. Then we just make a piece of content titled how to sign up to the gym complete beginner's guide and there's someone who's going to see that as a title and be like wait that's fucking perfect that's exactly what i they're fat as fuck that, that's exactly what i needed I, if this guy's got a workout routine i might end up buying it you want to know why most people struggle at this point and they never get any growth on social media 
because they're obsessed with the growth? Is the guy who's obsessed with the girl, who's needy for the girl, is he going to get her? Probably not, right? You understand this. As young men, we've, we've really been hearing this message recently, like being needy for girls is a bad thing, not right? But most, most little YouTubers that I speak to, they are needy for subs and views. They're like little whores for like views. They'll do anything for a little, a new view or a like. The issue is that people can see that, like the viewer can see that. They can see that this guy's too needy and it's just kind of repulsive. That he's making like whatever video he can possibly try and get some views on. It's not nice for the viewer to see that. What you wanna do is give the best, most effective advice that you can to that population that you're trying to help. The dream customer, the avatar that you've been thinking of. And you can just go down your problems list and literally just make a bunch of content just aimed at them. When these potential customers of yours stumble upon your content and it actually helps them get results, not like some random bullshit little shallow video like most like creators, you know, new people will be making. Think about how different this video is that you're watching compared to like the videos I, I used to make and I, I could be making right now. The top seven ways to make money online videos that are helping no one. But if you literally, imagine if you literally make a few hundred dollars by following this guide that I've put together over like hours of brain numbing, studying and journaling and thinking and everything, right? When you make the few hundred dollars and you see that I've got a program that I sell and my advice on a YouTube video has worked, you might be interested in actually buying from me. This is how you make money from social media. You first literally get people results just through your content, which means that your content, like the advice you give, needs to be powerful. It needs to be actually right. It means that you hold nothing back. You give all your gifts, your all, all your understanding, the best like teaching that you can do. And then when they realize that your stuff works and that you've got some kind of paid product. People are very interested in that because it's it kind of like people aren't stupid. Like if your advice works for them and they've seen that it works, they automatically assume like, okay, well, I can follow this guy and I can afford that thing now. I'll probably buy it. There's a very powerful mindset here that I got from Alex Hamozi. Give away the secrets, sell the implementation. Think about this video here. I genuinely could have sold as a thousand dollar course. Really could have, like, let, let's just give me like a little bit of credit there. I genuinely could have made this into a thousand dollar course. And if I just sold it passively, it would have added about 10, 20, 30,000 a month to my monthly income, which would have been nice, right? But 20 people a month would have bought it. 30 people a month would have been helped by it. Again, look at the views. So I'm sacrificing like, let's say 20 or $30,000 a month by just making this video and putting it out there instead of just making it $1,000 and like, you know, 10, 20, 30 people would actually buy it per month, right? I'm sacrificing like $30,000 up front, but hundreds of thousands of people are gonna be helped by this, but probably millions, let's say after a few years, this is gonna have a few million views, I'm quite sure of it. Of those few million people, let's say just 100,000 actually get some kind of like positive results in real life. And off those 100,000, let's say 1,000, their lives change forever because of this guide, which isn't like totally crazy, right? If this got a million views, we could imagine that for 1,000 people of that million, their lives changed significantly, like forever because of this guide, because of what they've learned and, and you know, kind of like set the motion to change their life with making money and financial freedom and everything, right? When those people make $500 and they see my programs $500, they'd buy it. Now I sacrificed about 30K a month, let's say, but when the thousand people spend $500 and I've just made half a million, do you see? I'm giving away the secret in such a powerful way that has hooked your attention, that is growing my audience, that is spreading this powerful word of mouth because people are like, holy fuck, Hamza, this video's really powerful. And the thousand people or so who really like go ahead and take advantage of this video and of the advice that I've given here, who really take the step seriously, well, they'll go ahead and buy my program, which means that although I could have made 30,000 a month by selling this, I'm going to actually make about half a million from this video alone. I just have to wait about five years for it. Half a million I've just added for 30 year old or 31 year old me, because I've just worked on this for the last two days. Think about that.
It's powerful, isn't it? You want to know how I got there? Give away the secrets. You can, you can probably hopefully tell I'm not holding any, anything back. Now, there's certainly like things that I sell, which would maybe add on to this, you know, in, inside of Adonis school and stuff. But you can tell that I'm not sat here thinking, oh, no, I won't teach them that thing because, you know, that's something we've got inside of Adonis school. My mindset is that I know that this guide will only actually go viral if I make it as good as possible with no holding back. So every secret that I know about making money is here. I'm not getting scared with this idea of like, oh, but what if like they, they, they use it and then they don't need to buy my product? You know, what if they, I give them the really good advice and then they use it? What if you give them bad advice and then no one uses it and then no one even likes your content and then no one spreads it? Or if anything, when people mention your content, they say, ah, it's crap. It's like, it's just a waste of time. When you give away the secrets in your content and you hold nothing back, you just try and give as much of your valuable knowledge that you know, what happens is that 99% of the viewers, they weren't going to buy your product anyway and they're still not gonna buy it. But those 99% will now actually like you and you know feel in some ways like indebted to you that they can't help but to mention your content to other people. That's what causes growth. That's what causes growth. Let me just give a quick tip to all of the YouTubers out there. Just shut the fuck up about the algorithm. Just like so many guys are obsessed with it, the algorithm, click-through rate, all of this. Literally just forget about that and just think to yourself, let me make a video that's so good that the viewers will just be sharing it more and more and more. Literally just like make yourself believe that the only way that you could get new viewers and new subscribers is if your current viewers, however small that amount is, is only if those current viewers shared your video. So your video has to be so good that the limited amount of people who see it right now are sharing it to others. Everyone's trying to play this game and it, it's always so fucking embarrassing seeing like this entire space of YouTubers trying to grow and getting like, look at the metrics of like click through rate, watch time, click through rate, watch time. And I'm like, bro, just shut up and just treat people. Like the algorithm is just people, just treat them like people. Just like make the humans who watch your video so impressed that they just keep sharing it they can't stop mentioning it if you start making it like a fuck ton of money after this video you're going to mention this you're gonna mention it because if it's helped you it will probably help like this friend that you end up meeting you probably don't want to walk someone through a five-hour conversation you can just send them the link to this video knowing that it worked for you and it's going to work for your future friends and if it works for them and you and you sort of introduce them to something of value then they accredit that value to you and your status goes up so it's a, it's a win, win, win situation because of how good this guide actually is. Now, there's going to be some insecure people who don't like the way that I'm speaking, thinking like, oh, well, you shouldn't be saying good things about yourself because that makes me feel even more secure. They can go fuck themselves. I know that this is a good guide. You know that this is a good guide. You wouldn't have put hours of your time to watch this. You need this level of like arrogance to think for, like this is some good content that I've made. Like all the little rubbish pieces of like content videos that I've I've watched so far, they can't compare with this. Do you see this conviction? So now I will go and share my own videos. I will go and promote them. And, and I will like, I'm going to tell you like, yeah, share this to other people. When you meet someone who needs to make money, tell them, just send them here. You don't need to walk them through a five hour step-by-step -step process. I've set it here. When you introduce them to this and it works for them, you've got another friend who's actually making money that you can travel with now. Do you see how powerful this is? I have spent the last few days making this and you will share this for me, growing my business for the next few years simply because this guide is so good that it's helped you and you literally just want it to help other people that you care about. You're literally going to help me grow my business and I'm not even like paying you for it. That's the power when you give away the secrets and you really put in the work. Other people will literally help you grow your business for free. Then the second part of this is sell the implementation. So it's give away the secrets, sell the implementation. We make content where we literally just think to ourselves, I'm going to expose everything in this niche. Like, you know, how to lose weight. I'm going to make a full step-by-step -step guide, which has got so much detail. And like, I'm, I'm going to make all the, you see the um, habit trackers and everything else. Like, I'm just going to give as much resources, as much great advice as possible. Walk someone through this problem step-by-step. -step. You give away the secrets. And then what you do is, your paid program, the package, 
a lot of that is about the implementation because 90 something percent of people, they'll watch the video, but they won't actually take action on it. It's just the, the shame of like the DIY, you know, do it yourself. Like this video is a do it yourself. A, a course is like do it yourself in the case that like the creator just kind of makes it and then he's out of the picture. Then it's up to you, the consumer to use it. 90% of people have already, like literally the point that we're on in this video, 95% of people have already clicked off. You're genuinely in the top 5% of like people's attention spans and commitment to this. That means that barely 5% of people actually genuinely like use the content and see results. It's just the way that it is. Now, the idea is that for the guys who use it and who start, you know, seeing some kind of results and start trusting the creator, a lot of them will want extra help with it. A lot of them will want guidance on how to implement what they've just learned. You want to give all the education away for free, but you want to be available there with your package if anyone wants, like your intensive extra help. And that's exactly what my program is. This is exactly what I'm suggesting to you. I'm, I'm telling you literally just like, you can see it's working for me. Copy it. Make super, super helpful videos that really just help a bunch of people that, you know, it's like just free education that we're putting out there. And for the small percentage of people who appreciate that education, but also want your extra help and they've got a bit of money to spend, well, they'll buy your product. We just do this long term. So we start posting onto social media and we try and make it as valuable as possible. Then we get into like a nice cadence, like a system, a schedule, an upload schedule. So on Twitter, you could discipline yourself to write three tweets a day, maybe five tweets a day. On YouTube, you could discipline yourself to post once a week, maybe twice a week, three times, four. Depends on like how long your video is. You can see with these videos, since they're so long, I go once a week. But if my videos were only 10 minutes or 20 minutes, I would be posting every single day at the same time. Once you've got that consistent schedule, what we want to do is start to capture the sale. So we, okay, we're understanding that the people who watch our content who are really helped would want to potentially buy from us. How do we actually get the sale? Well, it's simply with just like putting the links in the description, as you've seen here, we're going to be creating the sales page in just a second. Like you know, the link there, you can see like my top link in the description is Adonis School. And what we just need to do is a very specific term called CTA, call to action. What this means is inside of our content, every now and then we will tell the viewer exactly what to do. So for the last few minutes, I've mentioned Adonis School to you, but not actually to try and sell it to you. I didn't tell you, yeah, go and check out the, the link in the description, like go and buy the product. But rather I was just using it as an example because it's relevant for this. But a CTA would be for me saying, okay, you you're, you want to be an entrepreneur. If you want my help with that, go and click the top link in the descri description right now. That's a CTA. When you say it like that, the amount of people who will click on the link skyrockets. So you must tell like the, the viewer, the consumer exactly what to do. So interspersed in your content, let's say in these long videos, maybe I'll say it twice in like a shorter video, like 10 minutes or 20 minutes long. I'll just say it once for literally about just 10 seconds. And if you want to learn more about this, go click on the top link in the description. That's Adonis School. It's my paid program, but that's it. For, for Twitter, for example, you'd write a few tweets like normal, you're writing quotes, whatever. And then maybe you'll write like one tweet, which is about your paid product. You post it and then you go back to writing your normal tweets straight after that. You've got to make sure you don't oversell. You've got to identify that pretty much every time you try and sell to your audience, it kind of like lowers how good or positive they view you right now. So I could give you like this amazing, like this guide here. And if I didn't mention Adonis School even once in this video, you'd like me even more. The issue is like, we still, we want to make our money. We want to sell the product. So it's like, you want to use some call to actions, mention your product, but you don't want it to be like too much or too long. You don't want to have like, you see those sort of the old school, like shitty YouTubers who do like the sponsorships. And it's a two minute thing of them talking about the, the little fucking dollar shave club or, um, I don't know the website or Skillshare or whatever the fuck they've been like sponsored by. And they just waste like five minutes of your time per video. You've never seen me do that bullshit, have you? It's just one, it's cringe. And it's like, I think this is a big part of the reason why I was able to grow so quickly was because I very much undersold for a long time and kept like my courses and stuff previously, like very hidden. I, I tried not to like sell too much. It's only in the last few months that I've wanted to like actually like bump up my in income, level up my business. And now it's like, I'm at the phase of like wanting to slow down because I want my audience to grow. So when you want your audience to grow, don't sell anywhere near as much when you want to make more money, 
then sell more call to actions. So you've got to just find the subtle balance. If you're first starting off, I would say literally just put the call to action in every video, but literally just five to 10 seconds right at the last. And also, by the way, I've got a paid program top link in the description. That's it. Literally just that. Boom. Move on to the next. Here's your actionable step for this part of the guide. You need to decide if you want to be a speaker or a writer for your social media content. If you're unsure, just ask yourself, do you want to be on like video, like on YouTube or maybe just speaking into the mic on like Spotify, you know, podcasts, or do you want to, for example, write tweets or blogs or any, any kind of like keyboard writing thing? Just make the decision and you don't have to get like too like, you know, ah, oh, which one is it going to be? I don't know. Just choose one right now. Don't say you'll do both or any bullshit. Just choose one, go all in. And then we're just going to choose the social media platform for it. Honestly, I'd just say, just do YouTube. You're watching this long video on YouTube. You use YouTube fairly regularly. If you use, for example, TikTok or like Spotify podcasts twice as much as you actually watch YouTube, then fair enough, choose one of those ones. But in general, most of the people watching this would be like fantastic at YouTube just because you've already watched so much content here. So you kind of understand what's going on. So you know exactly which social media now to go all in. Now just spend a second just to think about the right mindset to posting. We're just trying to help our dream customer, our avatar. If you can go and have a look at the problems list, if you've made one already, or if you're going to do that very soon, that massive problems list is our content ideas. And we're just going to try and like give away the secrets, the, the knowledge that we know about this area.